Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to The Actor's Choice, brought to you by Photography as an Art, Harvey Brandman, Master Photographer, located at 1307 North San Fernando Boulevard, Burbank, California. And attorney Ron Irwin's 5150, the book, it's the story of a young Irwin serving 13 months as a Marine in South Vietnam. And author Larry Buford's book to the future, Time Travel, Message in a Capsule, available in paperback for only $17.95. And State Farm agent Carla Green, who says, and like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is the last show for us for the year. And what better way to close out that year than to talk about the stage and a dynamic full name play by award-winning playwright Cosman Russell called Labor of Love. Ladies and gentlemen, Cosman Russell. Thank you, Cosman, for stopping by today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely my pleasure. It looks uh, like you might, you got a winner here. Well, I certainly hope so. The audience will um, let me know in regards to that. Okay. Um, I did have a stage reading of this play, Labor of Love, mm -hmm. a play in three acts about relationships. Um, back in November over at the Barbara Morrison Theater, exactly where we're going to have it, um, have the performance, the live performance. Mm -hmm. And the audience really, really loved it. They embraced it because, hey, life is love and love is life <laughs> and relationship <laughs> is all what it's all about. Okay. Right? Now, you're a playwright by trade. Absolutely. You've done other things. You're an act You've also been an actor, a writer, done a lot of different things. Right. But what made you become a playwright? Well, um, back in 1992, back in the day, I, um, my brother, uh, my younger brother, was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And I went to visit him in a prison in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And he actually um, informed me that he had the AIDS virus. So I went there expecting to uplift him and encourage him and minister to him. And when I walked into the um, prison um, visiting area, and he came and when he entered, there was this glow over him. And all of a sudden he started ministering to me. And it was so profoundly impactful that I said, I have to share this spiritual um, journey, this spiritual experience with the world. And I promised him, I said, hey, I'm going to um, share this with the community, with the nation, and eventually the world. Didn't know how I was going to do it. And I certainly, at that time, I was trying my hand at stand-up comedy, which I bombed several <laughs> times, but I had a good time, a very good time. Um, and I um, came back from Ohio and I entered into a writing workshop with Michael Philip Edwards and about 25 other people. People may know Michael Philip Edwards from Runt, et cetera, et cetera. Bottom line, I began writing scene by scene the visit, and the visit eventually became a um, award-winning play. Okay. And a NAACP award winner, as well as drama log okay. again back in the day. And that was my first play. Okay. Yeah. Your first play. Let's take a look at that first play that you did. Okay. In prison for a crime he didn't commit. Now, Alex Waters. I need uh, you to get mom and dad to visit me. Can unleash his rage or confront the source of his anger. I'm facing 25 years, and it took you. Five comes in. In the visit. You have to be a real man. Over Baba Tunde, Ray Don Chong, Marla Gibbs, Hill Harper, Felicia Rashad, and Billy D. Williams in The Visit. Well, that was interesting. Yes. Casting was great, it looks like. Oh, that's top notch. Phenomenal casting. Are yeah. you kidding me? Billy D. Williams, mm -hmm. Hill Harper. Marla Gibbs, Felicia Rashad, right. absolutely. And again, that um, came, that initially 
I produced that play in a 50-seat theater, the Complex Theater on Santa Monica Boulevard. Yes, I know it. And um, Gene Wilder's nephew, who incidentally was on television today talking about um, the upcoming um, Gilda Ratner story mm -hmm. um, CNN, yes. uh, on CNN mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow. Um, he saw the play, was absolutely amazed and blown away, and so he courted me, if you will, for a year, um, trying to convince me to allow him to uh, produce and direct the play, and that was the end result. Wow. How did you feel sitting in a, in a theater watching that movie that you had a lot to do with? You know, and this is the honest to goodness truth, Ron. Mm -hmm. First of all, it felt great. Okay. But, and I hope this doesn't come across egotistical, I'm just a believer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't surprised. Because when I was writing that play, again, it was um, cathartic. Is that yes. the word I'm looking for? Cathartic. cathartic. Yeah. Um, it was, as I was writing the play, I was being ministered to. And I would read, um, after I wrote a scene, I would read what I wrote and tears would start flowing down my eyes. And when I got maybe three quarters of the way through the play, a voice, if you will, a spiritual awakening came over me and said, this will become a major motion picture. And I knew it and I believed it. And about a year and a half later, wow. it became a major motion picture. Wow. So, yeah. Walking, I, walking the red carpet that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quite yeah. an incredible experience. As a matter of fact, short story yes. in regards to that. Um, um, Denzel Washington um, was in a play, he was uh, a, a, a film, uh, a, was a boxer. Uh, you might remember, yes. the, what, what was the name of it? Do you I, remember? Uh, it it'll it'll, it'll yeah, come to Famous me. boxer, yeah. But, but he was playing a boxer, and the NAACP mm -hmm. National Convention at that time, and that was back in 2000, I believe, they were really knocking on Hollywood door and saying, we need more... Um, uh, Hurricane was the name Hurricane of the film. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Was, was, was the name of the film. They said, we need more stories representative of our African American community. And they had slotted for their national convention in Baltimore, Maryland. Be more. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Be more. Uh, uh, Hurricane. After they saw the visit, they bumped Hurricane and inserted the visit as their cornerstone film that they wanted to um, share with the nation and uh, so the black uh, national um, black uh, caucus, caucus. Or congressional black, black caucus, caucus. Mm -hmm. um, they um, they embraced it okay. and put a lot of energy and effort behind it saying these these are the types of stories that we want to tell about our community okay. Now, you're here today to talk about labor of labor love. Labor of love. <laughs> everybody needs it. Everybody, love. everybody needs love. Oh, right? yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm yes. probably butchering the song. Okay. I'm not it's a okay. singer. It brings but, back uh, memories. <laughs> yes, yes. I got a few kids myself. I know yeah, what you mean. Yes. There you go. There so you what go. inspired you to write this particular play? Well, initially, um, the president of Hollywood, uh, NAACP Ron chapter, Hassan. Ron Hassan, mm -hmm. asked me to write a 10-minute vignette for their um, um, theater festival that right. they have every year. So I wrote a piece called um, The Mediator, The Mediation. Okay. And it was about a power couple, a black power couple. And, and I wrote it and had it performed in front of an audience and they embraced it, they loved it. And so several years later, after another play that I wrote that I just recently, I had a stage reading of called The Message um, in September, I decided that I was going to write a full length version of the mediation and then through a series of conversations and discussions, I decided to change the name from the mediation to labor of love because it was more about relationships and love and the journey and the ups and downs and challenges and compromises and convictions and commitments and everything that encompasses love and relationships. Gosh, interesting. Yeah. 
took a lot of, uh, it's very, what I admired about the play, uh, okay. as when I was your narrator. Yes, in stage and the stage reading, you were the narrator. And you did a phenomenal well, job, you. Mr. Thank Brew. You. Thank you, sir. If you don't mind me saying Let so. me know when you have your next one. I, uh, absolutely. I'll be there. Well, it's coming soon. What impressed me about that play, it's about everyday life. Mm. Okay, you said you talked about the struggle, a black power struggle. That's ca that's cast number one. Mm -hmm. Couple number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Couple number two is? Cougar and the Cub. Cougar! And, you know, <laughs> this phenomenal actress. Oh, I yes. mean, absolutely amazing, amazing actress. actress. What, what Patricia name? Healy. Is that Patricia, Patricia Healy. Patricia and Healy. And, man, you're going to have her oh, later yeah, on the show, so I'll let oh, you, yeah. her tell you about okay. her credits. But, man, she's worked with giants in the oh, industry. Yes, I've told, but, um, told she, yes. this, this character is 30 years um, the senior of her love relationship. And the interesting twist, uh, anytime someone... Um, talks about a cougar relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They typically think that it's all about sex, all about the physical, and or sh this character happens to be a billionaire, yes, a um, a, a ship magnet, a mm -hmm. CEO of a cruise line, mm -hmm. and she's in a relationship with someone um, thirty or thirty years younger than her, mm -hmm. who he's not in it for the money. And he's not in it just for the sake, even though I'm sure he enjoys, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. the, <laughs> the physical part. Oh, yeah. But it's a true heart-to-heart -heart relationship where there is a very deep and profound connection, which a little, with a little surprise at the end. At the end, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We'll keep that hush hush. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So. Okay. Uh, you got a director. <laughs> Please tell me, because we're going to run some pictures. I have, a, your director I, right there. I have a director extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. what is her, her name? name is Kanique, Kanique. Sky. Sky. Many may know her from American Idol. She was one of the American Idol finalists. Um, she wrote a play called Sunday Morning and wrote a couple of other plays. And Sunday Morning is an NAACP award-winning play. I think maybe, I'm not sure, eight awards, I believe. Okay. Um, Phenomenal singer, again, as I said, she's American Idol uh, finalist a couple of years ago. I'm not sure exactly what year it was. But the thing that attracted me to Kanique is I went to see Sunday Morning and then another one of her plays, and it was very rich in story, very deep and profound in dialogue. The character development was phenomenal. So I was like blown away. I said, those are the types of stories that I like telling. Mm -hmm. Those are the types of stories that I think need to be told. And so I approached her afterwards and I said, I don't know when, I don't know how, because I know you, she's a producer, mm -hmm. she's an actress, she's a playwright. So she has her own vehicle and her own company. Okay. But I told her, I said, one day I want to combine forces and work with you okay and i approached her carl gilliard a lot of people may know carl gilliard oh, yes. um he was celebrating i believe his 60th birthday yes. uh Go several months ago yes yeah they're good man yeah, good man good he's man. worked in several of my plays mm -hmm. as well um he uh was having a roast and kanik happened to be there and i had that at that time decided to have a stage reading of my new play the message which is a gospel musical that's okay. I love it at any rate I approached her and mm -hmm. asked her would she consider being a part of the reading and she consented to do so and as a result of watching and witnessing her work ethic mm -hmm. and her approach to character and um, her, pro her her producing abilities I just knew a I assumed that she had directed in the past this is her first time directing okay but I just know God has given me the ability to just kind of recognize talent okay. spot talent so at any rate I approached her and said asked her would she consider directing uh, this play she read the script fell in love with it and I tell you what the audience is going to be absolutely oh, yes. amazed. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> she is gifted. She She's beyond. Oh, yeah, well, you you watched, you, know, I watched you watched her work. You watched her work. Let me let's start with the other members of the uh, the, the first couple. 
Okay, the first couple, Diasic Bernay okay. and Trisha Mann. Okay. Absolute fire. Diasic was in, I had made mention of mm -hmm. my piece, The Message, and that was the first time I met him. And Tr uh, um, uh, Kanique Sky, the director, brought him to the project. Okay. Incredible singer. Phenomenal actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely amazing. He's been on the circuit for at least 20 years now singing. As a matter of fact, James Pickens Jr., oh, yeah. the chief from Grey's Anatomy, Anatomy, he was yeah. also connected with my piece, The Message, um, had worked with um, um, Diasic several years ago gotcha. on a musical that he was doing, and, and yeah. he endorses him and says he's absolutely phenomenal. So he's incredible. And then Trisha Mann. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. As you can see with her photo, she's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. But I tell you what, it's not about the looks. This woman, the acting chops that she has, and she's been around for years, yeah. I would imagine, somewhere in the, I don't want to tell her no, age, but right. somewhere mm -hmm. for a long time. Gotcha. And she is good and in this role i've seen trish do at least 10 performances film television plays she's done a couple of plays for me i have never ever seen her more powerful okay. than the role she's playing in this power struggle which is the name of this that particular vignette for this three act okay. play because there's three different stories okay. couple number two Wow! I already said wow. He it did. So say about, it again. Um, oh, amazing, <laughs> incredible, phenomenal, spectacular, awe-inspiring. Patricia Healy, who was introduced to me by Denise Douse, mm -hmm. actress, director, extraordinaire, been on the circuit for many, many years. Oh yeah. I called um, her, uh, Janice, and said, I need a beautiful, incredible, gifted, white actress for this role. Mm -hmm. Mid-50s plus in mm -hmm. age to play a cougar. She sent me a reel of uh, Patricia. I was blown away. I called Patricia and we immediately connected on the phone and talked for a couple of hours on different occasions. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wanted her to do this play. Who's the young guy with her? Oh, man. Uh, wow. Brother Nick. Yeah. Now, but, uh, Nick, now look at I mean, come on now. I mean, he's, he's uh, what do you, what do women say? He's a, knockout. He's a catch, a knockout, yeah. whatever oh, yeah. the terminology. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick, he has an incredible profession outside of acting, but you know what happens when that bug yes. bites you. Oh, the yes. bug bit him several years ago. Mm -hmm. And so now he's taking classes and um, working. And bottom line, we brought him in, Nick and myself brought him in for an audition. And the character initially was supposed to be African American. Okay. But he was so amazing that I just made some minor adjustments mm -hmm. to the script and you just watch the fire and the chemistry between this young man and Patricia. Will You're I burn my hand? Be, Will I burn my hand? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair may caught, catch you on fire. You know, just, just, oh, oh. <laughs> Their hair may catch you on fire. <laughs> But yes, I mean, he's, yes. He, he's amazing okay. and, and, and a humble spirit, yep. but extremely talented. Extremely talented. And, yeah. and, and let me tell you something, audience. You are in for a treat. Acting, I, I'm an actor by That's right. trade. Mm -hmm. That's where, how I fell in love with theater arts and, and, and stage because I was on the stage. And, and I feel that perhaps that's maybe, I, I just understand the, the structure and, mm -hmm. and what actors need to feed off of and work with. But at any rate, um, kind of forgot where I was going. Couple number this. three, we're running out of time. Couple number three, I'm, uh, oh, okay, couple number <laughs> three. Um, again, the actresses, Rhonda Mormon, uh, she's 
doing film now. She just did an animate, uh, animated series about Motown. Mm -hmm. She's the voice, I believe, of the grandma. Um, the story is there are two women in a, in a um, relationship, a loving relationship. And it is not cheap, it's not gratuitous, it's not like, well, let's see two women up here kissing. No. I, the point I'm making is they have the same challenges, the same struggles, the same euphoria, um, the, the, the same types of decisions, mm -hmm. and many interesting journeys of any other relationship. And the two women really pull it off. And it's very extremely tastefully done. Okay. Now yeah. you got Rob Schuyler in there. What's his Rob Schuyler. Rob Schuyler. Yes. He's the mediator because, again, these three couples have challenges that they're going through. So he's a psychologist slash mediator for all three, uh, all for, for all three couples. He, okay. He's uh, involved with couple number one and number two, and then there's references made of him in uh, couple number two. Mm -hmm. But he is a uh, psychologist slash mediator by day and a stand-up comic wanna be <laughs> by night you know whose alter ego is rodney dangerfield and man we have a lot of fun oh, yeah, with that so good, good. you're gonna cry you're going to laugh you're going to i guarantee you this okay you're going to leave the theater and talk to your significant other mm -hmm. you may call some old boyfriends and girlfriends and say you know something I have a new light on this. I, we, we need to talk because that's what I want to do. I want to provoke dialogue. I want people to think outside of themselves and understand that, man, at the end of the day, life is about love. Life is truly about relationship. I'm a member, I'm an Omega Sci Fi, a Q dog, okay? <laughs> yeah, and dog. friendship is essential to the soul. That's our motto. And that's what relationship is all about, connecting with kindred okay. spirits. So that's, you, you, you're going to get a lot out of this okay. about love relationship, uh, friendships, um, and just understanding what the journey of life is truly about. Okay. Date, place, and time of the shows. January 19th and 20th. That's um, Saturday, mm -hmm. January 19th. 4 p.m. Saturday, January 19th, 4 p.m. Sunday, January 20th, 4 p.m. Barbara Morrison Theater, that's in Lamert Park at 4305 Degnan Boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, and that's again in Lamert Park, Los Angeles. Right. For tickets, Cosmond.com, K O S M O N D, my name, dot com, Cosmond.com have all of the information, a synopsis of the play, all of the actors listed, and ticket price is $25, okay? You can go online, order them, and if, it, um, if some are available, tickets will be sold at the door only on the day of the performances. On the 19th, there's a champagne uh, reception. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know how we do it <laughs> at yeah, Cosmo Russell down. Productions, get man. <laughs> you know, a champagne reception and meet and greet Excellent. on the 19th um, mm -hmm. uh, after, the, after the performance. What's next for you? After this, this piece I've been talking to you about, the message. Yes. Man. See, what's happening, Ron? is uh, I, I love gospel music. Mm -hmm. I listen to gospel music every day, all day. And I always wanted to write a play that incorporated the old hymns. I love praise and worship, but man, I like the old Church yes. of God in Christ yes. and Baptist. So I wrote a play um, that um, uh, utilizes those old hymns. And around Easter, I'm going to do a production in a much larger theater than the Barbara Morrison okay. uh, Theater. Um, uh, the message, look out for it, I'm telling you. Um, I'm bringing, a, a, what's happening now, uh, the church um, pews are diminishing. They, uh, people aren't going to church as much. So I'm going to do the church on wheels through the theater, man. I'm going to take the church to the community, to the nation, and to the world through the message. I'm telling you. Look out for the message. It's 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 a life changer. Okay. It's a world changer. Any final words about this play? 
you got to see it. You got to see it. If you love good acting, if you love good story, if you are about relationship, if you are about and, and understand what love is all about, even if you're confused about love, you have to see this play. It will absolutely blow you away and help you in, in life just through your relationships and, okay. and communications. Right. Number one reason why relationships make mess up. Yeah. May I have your right hand, please? Sure. Here's a silver dollar, my friends, my trademark. Run, run, run. <laughs> and the, the, the day I met you, you gave me one of those. That's right. Man, thank you so you much. Bet. I appreciate you. this play is marvelous and sells out. Oh, sells man. Out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm confident that it will. Thank you. Thank All right. Thank, thank you so you. much, thank man. You. I appreciate you. you. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to have uh, the lady you were talking about, Patricia Healy. We're going to talk Ooh. about her. Okay. Fasten your seatbelts. Fasten your seatbelts. Okay. <laughs> the studio of Harvey Brandman Photography is an art for you a $100 discount off any photo package valued at $300 or more. Now, Harvey has been in the business for nearly a quarter of a century, and he certainly knows how to take care of his customers. So please give him a call today at 818-954-9294. That's 818-954-9294. You'll be glad you did. And by the way, please tell Harvey that you heard about his, his offer right here on the Actors' Choice. 5150 The Book. It's the latest release from author and attorney Ron Irwin. As a young Marine, Irwin spent 13 months in Chulai, Republic of Vietnam, with his experience when he was nearly 3 million Americans went to war. As he puts it, 5150 The Book is currently available in paperback at lulu.com. That's lulu.com. Irwin says he'll give you 20% of net book sales split evenly between the veterans and, and foreign wars and Vietnam veterans of America. Back, book to the Future. That's time travel message in a capsule. It's a new book by author... by author Larry Buford. It's a historical and faith-based account of how what you do and what we follow today will affect us tomorrow. The author also calls it an adventure for those who want to travel back through time. The book is now available in paperback for only $17.95 from Amazon. Get your copy today. And now a word from State Farm agent Carla Green. <laughs> Let me ask you something. What do you see when you look at your home and your car? Do you see a bundle? A combo deal. That's how other insurance companies see them. But a State Farm agent sees so much more. Because a State Farm agent sees your home and your car as more than just four walls and four wheels. They see the things you've worked really hard for. So why not give them the protection they deserve? Let me help you with that. Give me a call. State Farm agent Carla Green. 213-239-9675. I look forward to speaking with you. Thanks, Carl. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. For more information, 213-239-9675. That's 213-239-9675. And finally, if you have a product, a service, or an upcoming event that you'd like to see advertised on this program, please call 323-533-1036. That's 323-533-1036. Our prices are very affordable. Thank you. Roll it. Always a couple of heavy wits when it came to arguing. Yeah, well, we were no slouches when it came to making up either, huh? Bailey, maybe we could, you know, talk, talk one of these days. I'll call you right after the holidays. Merry Christmas. They lost the key. Huh? 
Well, we're going to need bolt cutters for these cuffs. And what's the patient's name? It's Neil Shearer. Thank you. Is that you? You got my money, Lamar? You got the ticket? Let me see it. Really dope. Oh, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you have just seen actress Patricia Healy. Honored to have you here today, my dear. It's my honor, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year next nice for you, and you. I hope this is a prosperous year for you. Oh, me too. Indeed, Thank you. Indeed, indeed. Now, you have 34 IMDb acting credits. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. And you've done a lot. You've worked with a lot of actors, famous actors and actresses, A-list actors and actresses. What's that been like for you? Well, they're fine actors, mm -hmm. and um, it's been an honor. Okay. It's, uh, they elevate me. They've only uh, helped to make me better, which we're always striving to be as actors, right? Um, so um, I just hope it continues. I, I just adore each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. I really do. Now, you were born where? Well, I was born right outside of Cairo in Egypt mm -hmm. in a town called Agusa. Say that again. Agusa. Agusa. Do that again. You look Agusa. good doing that. Agusa. <laughs> I like that. We're going to talk later. Um, Agusa, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's outside of Cairo. Outside of Cairo, okay. Yeah. Agusa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And um, you grew up where? Well, I, we lived in a town outside of Cairo called Maadi. Okay. I went to the Lycée Francais in Cairo. Okay. And then lived there for eight years, and then we moved to Greece for a year and then to the United States, around 69, mid-late 69. Mid, late 69. Okay. And what city did you move into in, our, in this country? Uh, Westfield, New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Yep. <laughs> Stop talking that way. You keep flirting with me, you're going to be in a lot of trouble, mister. <laughs> <laughs> when you were young, what inspired you? mean like last week? Like last week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You gotta watch those times go by, you know. Look at the time cards. I'm, I'm looking. I'm, you. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take my eyes off it. Uh, what inspired you to get into acting? Well, you know, I was one of six children. Okay. And I think maybe there's always that possibility of vying for attention. Um, who knows? But um, when we lived overseas, we just never had TV. We didn't watch TV. Everything was outside. It was outdoors. So they did like, there was a country club down the street from our home where we went, and they had pageants and dances, and so I always seemed to want to be a part of that. And I remember one evening, I was very young, oh my gosh, maybe five, my parents... That was two weeks ago. Three. Oh. My, <laughs> my parents took us to an outdoor movie theater mm -hmm. at the Mahdi Country Club, and I saw this giant screen, and it was Mutiny on the Bounty with, I believe, Paul Muni, mm -hmm. and I, I just, like, I was like, I, I want to go, I want to get in there, I want to get on that ship, I want to get, and I just, swashbuckling, yes, swashbuckling, yes. the whole thing, and I, I just never, I just never forgot that, so that when we moved to the States, mm -hmm. and we, you know, TV, we always had TV, you know, didn't go outside as much, right. um, unfortunately, but um, I was mesmerized by, by the things I saw. Get Christy Love, Police Woman, Ellie Mae Clampett, Mannix. I was in love with Mannix. Mm -hmm. I mean, obsessed with it. Um, Cannon, all the way to The Odd Couple. Um, but I just love those strong women characters. Mm -hmm. And then I saw Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, and I saw Betty Davis, and I was like, oh, that's a little scary, because that is me. So maybe I should just be me Betty and play Davis crazy. Well, I just Davis wanted to play. I, I love crazy. <laughs> yes, so. Yes. You know. Yes. I mean, 
They never use the word Patricia Healy and stable right. in the same sentence unless they there's a horse involved. Got you. Got so you. I'm just like, okay with that. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay with that. Okay. Because I saw a, a short cut that we, we can't show it today because we're running out of time. But I saw a cut of you taking on four guys and you used karate and kicked all their butts. Oh yeah, that was in South Africa, and, and one guy broke his nose. Oh, I felt terrible. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really felt terrible because they trained me, and I yes. just I, I was off a little. Got bit, you. So. Okay. All right. So now you're doing this play. Wonderful play. Since when did you like stage work? Well, I started doing stage work. You know, I was doing it in Westfield High School in New Jersey. I I did it in New York City. I love. That's my core. I love being on the stage. Um, I had a great mentor, Harriet Loudon. She was my, I'm still in touch with her to this day, mm -hmm. my high school drama teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother was the creative soul in my family, so she's an inspiration. I dedicate my performance to her in this. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. I know in this show, and we were talking about this in the blue room, green room, um, the fact that I know a lot of people who are actors and actresses, but don't want to get up on that stage. Well, that's sort of like, Getting mm. fat and not wanting to go to the gym. Okay. And once you go and you leave, you always feel better. And you feel like you've made progress. So I would encourage anyone, uh, regardless of where you started, mm -hmm. to exper experiment mm -hmm. with the stage. Because there's no take one, there's no take two, there's no room for right. error. Right. And the cool thing is you have to use your chops because if there is error, you got to fix it right, right. then and there. there. Right. You know, Because so those people are sitting there just waiting. They're watching. <laughs> I wonder how many people bring rotten eggs and tomatoes and stuff like oh, that. Right? Yeah, no. That, mm. would be scary. <laughs> that would be scary. Yes, indeed. So tell us about Labor of Love. you got a very significant role in this. You are in the, what, what, what couple are you in? Luck be a lady ah, tonight. Hey. Go I ahead. got lucky. <laughs> yep. Uh, as Cosman writes in the play, it's a wonderful line, uh, luck is what comes uh, at the intersection of, um, oh, watch me forget my line now, uh, uh, preparation Take two. and <laughs> preparation and, and um, opportunity. Got you. Something gotcha. like that. Gotcha. And, and that's how I felt. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a very good friend, Denise Dows. Mm -hmm. and, um, you both have something in common? We have a few things in common. Yes, you both have blonde hair. <laughs> yeah, we do have yes, both have blonde hair. Hers a little shorter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she has better lips. <laughs> she has beautiful lips. Um, but uh, she, I suppose, had, mm -hmm. from what I hear, was speaking to Cosman and had recommended me for the role. So gotcha. he called me, and I read the script, and I thought, wow, mm -hmm. this is really great. Mm -hmm. Challenging. Challenging. So much to work with. Um, words were, you know, everything made sense. Mm -hmm. So I thought, here we go. Yes. And it's been a great ride so far. So tell me, when we get, if I'm, I'm, I'm buying a ticket, $25. Yes, you are, right? And that's a lot of money. Uh, right? It's good money. It's five Starbucks latte. Got you. Now, when I go to this play, what am I going to see? Well, you're going to see quite, quite a bit. You're going to see fantastic writing, mm -hmm. beautiful direction, mm -hmm. amazing acting. Mm -hmm. When we did the table reading and I first... Um, watch Trisha Mann Grant perform, I thought, oh my God, bring it, Patty, because the bar was just raised so high. Yes. She's amazing. Um, and then I got to work with Nick Checkett. Nick and, Checkett. you know, speaking of actors elevating you, he elevated me. I had to, you know, I had to be there. Yes. For, you know what I mean? Yes. So he's wonderful. Yes. Um, and very easy on the eyes. Yes. Very easy on yes. the eyes. And so um, not as cute as my husband. Good. Yes. But like, you know, yes. kind of close mm -hmm. by. Mm -hmm. Hi, husband. Uh, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, Sergio. <laughs> um, yes. But yeah, he's wonderful. Yes. And so, um, and Kanik yes. really has a vision. Mm -hmm. And so I trust her. And like I said, you know, good writing and, and, and good thoughtful words, things that you can tap into, help. Yes. They just help. Each one of the couples, as we talked about it with yes. uh, the writer, um, this is life, real life. Real life. This yes. goes on all the time. Yes. It goes on all the time, and um, a lot of times people get caught in their own bubble, and that's, I think that's where judgmentalism is born. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think what this play does is not only does it give you a peek inside relationships that maybe you are not aware exist or don't want to admit exist, but also make you also look at them and maybe, maybe go, oh, that's me. Like, that's, who knows that? Who knows that about me? So it's f something for everyone. It's an education. Yes. 
Yeah, taps. So, taps. taps. So when they make a movie out of this play, are you going to be on board? If they offer, I, 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 have, to, I have to see the offer first. Like, <laughs> you know, let's see what they tell my people. <laughs> Now, when you let's back up a little bit. Okay. Okay. They offered you the role. What did uh, what made you take it? Well, I read it okay. first. I, I, you know, I I asked to read it. Right. And I read it, and I just, like I said, it just hit me. And I also like the contrast between all. Really, they're all different. Yes. Each story is different, so it's not like you're in the beginning and you're judging one story and waiting for something to happen. They just go right in. Right. It just goes right into the meat of one. Right. And, you know, once that is complete, you go mm -hmm. right into the meat of another one okay. and another one. So it's continuous. It has flow. Okay. And the words are, are very well chosen. There's okay. not a word written there that doesn't have um, a point. Okay. Patricia, what do you get out of being an actress? Well, I get to meet people like you, don't I? Ah, yes, indeed. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop flirting with me, Ron. No. <laughs> He's 20 feet from us. <laughs> That's okay. You know, I'm married. I'm not dead. <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> but, no, no yes. I mean, I, I yes. get to meet wonderful people. I get yes. to work with wonderful people. It's, um, it's, it's also a sense of accomplishment. I've never wanted to do anything else, ever, ever. Um, I've tried, but it, this, is, this isn't work to me. Mm -hmm. And most people who are in any sort of creative field, be it a painter, pianist, uh, singer, actor, any of those people, they would understand that. It's, it feeds us. It's like you hunger for this. Right. It's not work. It's joy. It's joy. You're giving us advice. Can you give us some more for someone, a young person who, because you know these schools, the colleges and whatnot, they're right. cranking out people coming out of theater classes, and I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. I want to be an actress. I want to be a star. So what advice would you give them? You know, I was, <clears throat> I was in a particular place one day, mm -hmm. dining, and I, it was a group of us, and I was right. sitting next to Sir Anthony Hopkins. Never heard of him. No, me either mm -hmm. at the time. Right. No, <laughs> he had just finished Silence of the Lambs. Right. And I was st still kind of uh, just getting my, my feet wet mm -hmm. in terms of getting paid to work. And um, I was bartending. And he asked me, are you an actress? And I said, well, I'm an actress, but um, I, I bartend for a living. And he said, no, you're an act if you're an actor, you're an actor. So I don't believe there's such a thing as wanting to become an actor. It's mm -hmm. in your veins. But my suggestion or my advice, because there is no formula, right. is you know, to go to the gym, right. which is theater, Kay. and study, and find a good coach, yes. and be honest. And, be, and don't, go for, don't do it for money, because you'll be broke <laughs> for a long time. Right. And you know, fame is fleeting. So um, I would say just go to the gym. Yes. You know? yes. What I love about you actors and actresses, lesbians, if you will, um, that's just a script, words on a script. But you have the ability, the training, and the wherewithal to take those words and make them jump off that page. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's I fun. Love that. Yeah, it's fun. It can be painful sometimes. Sometimes. You have to tap into yeah. you know, some of your own stuff. I like, I've seen some actors, and one of the actresses that's in this play can cry on a dime. Really? Really. <laughs> wow. And give you some change. And give you some change. Give you some change. Wow. It's the emotion, again, as an actress. You come to that scene, that part of a scene where you, it, someone told you, we just killed somebody that you know very well. And, and, you, and, you, 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 and all of a sudden they come to tears. It's the writing. Gotcha. It, it, the writing <coughs> sets you up. And gotcha. also, it, it's very, you know, I have to say that, you know, when it's, this is something particularly true about the stage as opposed to film. When, when you're in it, Yes. And you're done. Right. And somebody says, hey, you know, I love that part. Or you were, and you go, really? Because I don't know what I just did. It's hard. You can't repeat. The, right. It's It's got to be organic. Right. So, you know, there are times when you can cry on a dime. Right. And then there's other times when you're like, I, I didn't cry. But that's okay. Right. Because that's, that would be too showy, right? right. If, if it comes from here, it, it, it it'll project either way, mm -hmm. you know. Whether you cry or you don't, as long as it's real. As long as it's real. Who's your favorite actress? <sighs> That's a tough one, right? Right. Um, well, I've always loved Betty Davis. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I can watch anything Betty Davis. And um, 
my husband can tell you that I'm a little bit, um, well, I, I, there's quite a few today, it's hard to say, but I love Viola Davis. Oh, she's great. She doesn't, the woman can do no wrong yes. in my book. Yes. And um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I think there's some, you know, wonderful, wonderful actresses out there. Mm -hmm. There's just some that you tend to hone in on every once in a while. Okay. You know, zoom in on and just kind of want to watch okay. and watch and watch. But um, I don't have a favorite. Okay. Um, I, 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 you know, you put me on the spot with that. Well, one. It's, it's people asking. It's that. So it's much <laughs> easier when you were flirting with me. <laughs> I just when you ask me these hard questions, it's like God. I got another hard question for you. Okay. Tell us the place, date, and time of this event that you were involved. What play? With. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. no, it's Cosman called... will have a fit if you said that. Again. I know that's why I did it because yes. I know he's watching. Yeah, he's watching. I was like, exactly. <laughs> Cosman. <laughs> ooh. Um, it's called Labor of Love. Labor of Love. And it truly is yes. for all of us. Right. Um, it's on January 19th, which is a Saturday, mm -hmm. January 20th, the following day, Sunday, mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. at the Barbara Morrison Theater mm -hmm. uh, in Lamert Park. Okay. And if you want to get tickets ahead of time, which I would encourage, because I do know quite a few people that are buying, and I hope there's going to be some left by the time people decide to, to purchase. But it's at Cosmond, K-O-S-M-O-N-D. Dot com. He's the, the other Osmond. He just added a K. Got you. Got you. He, yeah. Gotcha. So just think <clears throat> Osmond with a K. Got you. Yeah. One more question. Okay. How do you want to be remembered? Now you're going to, see, now you're going to make me cry on a dime. <laughs> <laughs> you are and give now, me some change. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I want to be remembered mm -hmm. as a good wife. Okay. A good person. Okay. And the best of my parents. Okay. Herta and John Healy. I want to be the best. If I can be a little bit of the best of them, mm -hmm. I'm good to go. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I have your right hand, please? <sighs> this is flashback. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> For good luck. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. My sir. pleasure. My happy pleasure. New Year. Happy New Year. I to hope you. 2019 is a happy healthy, prosperous year for you. And the same to you. My pleasure. I'm not finished yet. Oh, you're not? Oh, no. Oh, I get another one? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Oh. oh. Always for the ladies. Now, we see, always make sure the ladies get some That time. is class. Hey, we try to do the best we can. That is class. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you for you having very, me. Very, very much. And thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Quite an honor. Quite an honor, indeed. Well, folks, besides this being our last show for the year, we're also leaving the studio for a new one in Burbank, California, uh, right across from the uh, WB Studios. Got to tell you, I'm going to miss this studio. I'm going to miss Tony and miss all the folks that come in and help us do the show that we do. We've had some great shows and some great guests since we started here in September 2017. And since I want to want to make sure that I dedicate this last show to a very dear friend of mine. Uh, he passed away this year, earlier this year. He's a writer, he's a producer, Michael Ajakwe Jr. May he rest in peace. Special thanks to our sponsors, Harvey Bramman Photography as an Art, Ron Irwin's 5150 The Book, Larry Buford's Book to the Future, Time Travel, Message in a Capsule, and State Farm Agent Carla Green. And I want to sincerely thank playwright Cosman Russell and actress Patricia Healy Best wishes to your play. Hope you guys sell out over there. And to our ever-growing audience, we wish you a happy new year. We'll see you next year.